Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. This is the third of a series of three videos where I focus on training a vision transformer model on Amazon SageMaker. So in the first video, we focused on dataset preparation uh, and I showed you how you can load images directly from S3 to build a, a Hugging Face dataset that you can use for, for training. In the second video, we actually use this dataset to train a vision transformer model for image classification. Uh, and we used the trainer API in the transformers library and the hugging face container on SageMaker to do that. And in this video, the last of the series, uh, we're going to train again and we'll still use uh, SageMaker and the hugging face container. But instead of using the trainer API, we'll use PyTorch Lightning. Okay, I found a really cool example from one of my colleagues and I figured, hey, um, I've, I haven't seen an example of that, so let's do one, right? So let's get started. The SageMaker part is absolutely identical to what we saw in the second video. Uh, the only difference is I am using a different script, but the uh, estimator definition is just the same, right? So we passed the location of the script, the same hyperparameters, because I made sure the two uh, training scripts, you know, use the same uh, the same hyperparameters. The transformer version, and in this case, we need to make sure that we use 4.10 or higher, which shouldn't be a problem, uh, because there's a there's a weird bug where you run into an error where um, when you import transformers after PyTorch lighting, but it's fixed. So you know, short long story short, if you use 4.10 or higher, you're good. Uh, PyTorch 1.9, Python 3.8, and a cost-effective GPU instance, right? And then I call fit, passing the location of my training sets and validation set and test set. And uh, just for reference, if you didn't watch the second video, these come from uh, a SageMaker processing job that I ran in the first video, okay? Building data sets from images stored in S3, right? So um, no, nothing weird. Um, let's look at the, the training code and then we'll uh, take a look at the log. So here we go. So, um, well, um, I'm lazy as everybody knows. So in the second video, I used uh, an existing notebook from, uh, from Philip. <laughs> Thanks again. And in this one, I'm, I'm using actually a code that uh, my colleague Niels uh, implemented though. Thank you, Nils. Um, there are lots of really, really good transformer tutorials in a, uh, at that, that, that location. So please go and, and check them out. Um, so what I did here is uh, I took this example that runs in uh, in a notebook and uh, I adapted it to run on SageMaker. So there was a little bit more work here. Uh, I implemented script mode. Uh, so that this uh, training code would interface with the Hugging Face deep learning container. Uh, I had to install PyTorch Lightning in, uh, in the container, um, and that's how I found this uh, uh, 4.10 or higher requirement on transformers. Um, and yeah, that's about it, right? That's, uh, these are the changes. But again, this, I've done this many, many times, and this really shows that you can take um, machine learning code that you find on GitHub or somewhere else, you know, code that runs in, in a notebook in a local environment and easily adapt it to run on SageMaker. And again, you know, the keyword you're looking for is script mode. If you're, if you think adapting code for SageMaker is complicated, well, it's not. Okay. Uh, it's actually the easiest thing. Uh, and you need to look at this feature called script mode, right? And uh, we're going to cover uh, this again. So, um, in in the entry point of my training script, right, and this is what script mode is all about. I'm grabbing those um, hyperparameters uh, as command line arguments, right, because this is really how uh, that script will be invoked inside the SageMaker container. It's invoked as Python, my script, uh, and then command line arguments, right. Hence, name script mode. And I can also uh, get the location of the, the different data sets and a few more things, okay? And then the rest uh, is, is your code, right? And uh, if you compare my code, quote unquote, 
or my SageMaker code to Nils uh, local code, um, you'll see it's about the same. I'm just using command and arguments. That's it. So we load the data sets and remember these are hugging face data sets. So I can use load from disk. Um, they're automatically copied inside the container by SageMaker. Um, I need to make sure um, they're all in torch format. Okay. And uh, yeah, I build data loaders from those, uh, from those three data sets. And then I create a new model. Okay, I instantiate this model, which uh, we'll take a look at in, in a second. So this is the, the PyTorch Lightning part. Okay, and I use the trainer object in PyTorch Lightning, um, setting very few <laughs> parameters here, just epochs and how many GPUs I have. I could fit to trade and test to run the, eval, uh, the evaluation on the test set, right? And then I just save the model uh, as a, a PyTorch Lightning model, okay? So very, very simple process. And again, exactly what you would be doing in your notebook, except, you know, we're using command line arguments here that are passed by SageMaker. So let's take a look at the uh, IPatch or uh, Lightning. So uh, it's not part of the Hugging Face container, so uh, I have to install it. And then uh, the, the, the implementation here is, is very interesting. So, um, um, and again, kudos to Nils uh, for doing this. I, I just tweaked it, but uh, he came up with it. Um, so what we do here is we actually start from um, a headless uh, vision transformer model. Okay, so we download that and uh, we add um, um, a classification layer um, at, the, at the back, right? So we add a, a, a head for, um, for classification using a dropout layer and a linear layer connecting uh, obviously the the last layer in the in the, the transformer model to a fully connected layer with the right number of uh, labels okay um so that's pretty interesting and uh, this is really different from the, the the examples we saw in the second video where we uh, we downloaded uh, a model for classification that was you know good to go and we fine-tuned it fine-tuned it here, you know, we just grab the we grab the the base model and we had a classification layer. So it's a good example of you know customizing uh, a model here, and I guess that's why uh, people like PyTorch Lightning. Um, the rest is really um, you know pretty simple. We have the forward function. So first, of course, we feed the pixel values. So these are the pixel values extracted from the image by the uh, the feature extractor for that model okay which is what we did already in the first video when we prepared the data set so that's already a feature in our data set um, and we uh, we use those pixel values to generate outputs and then we feed that output to through dropout in the the classification layer um, okay and uh, we have the training step function and we have the validation step function and we have the test step function uh, which all use that common step function that receive a batch of uh, uh, of images or pixel values, feed them through the model, compute uh, the the loss function, uh, and just report on you know uh, predictions, accuracy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so yeah, I guess this is really the fact. Yeah, the only difference here compared to you know generic loop is. Okay, we use that pixel values feature and, and the, the label feature, but the rest is really you know, very uh, uh, generic and, and you could reuse it with other, uh, other models and other tasks. Okay. All right. Uh, what else can I say? Um, that's about it, right? Configure the estimate, the estimate, the optimizer, sorry. And yes, the three, returning the three data loaders, right? So. Yeah, pretty simple uh, code, but pretty clever code. I really like the fact that we start from the base model and add layers for classification. I think that's, you know, that's an interesting way. If you if you want to customize base models, you, you know, you could do it like that. So now let's take a look at the log. And again, we see some verbose SageMaker stuff. We see the installation of PyTorch Lightning in there. And yep we see we loaded our three data sets 
build the data loaders, and then we go and train, okay, for uh, three epochs, I believe. Right, so download the model, initialize the weights, okay, and we train for a bit, and yeah, let's get to the end of that. Uh, yeah, validation, this is the, the evaluation. Okay, so here we have almost 95%, not, not as good, but I've run different examples, and yeah, sometimes it's a small test set, right? It's only 250 images, so there's a lot of variability here. I guess I would need a little more, but uh, yeah. Uh, generally you're going to get good results okay we save the model and yeah this trained interestingly this trained a little faster uh, i don't know if it's significant um but this is about yeah is it oh, it's almost 11 minutes um the previous example on with the trainer api was uh about 15 so i don't know maybe it's random maybe it's not <laughs> go and figure it out uh and yeah so the model is uploaded in s3 and of course we can copy it locally and extract the artifact and we see that pytorch lightning model okay which we could extract and deploy uh in uh, in whatever way we want um, of course we can't really use the uh, uh the hugging face container for that uh, because uh, because it doesn't support pytorch lightning and it doesn't support image classification tasks for now so, okay, well, I guess that's what I wanted to uh, to show you in this one. Um, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool example using PyTorch Lightning. And uh, this concludes the series. So, just to recap, in the first uh, video we prepared the data set. In the second video, we trained with the Trainer API and the Hugging Face library. Um, and in this video, we trained using PyTorch Lightning, and we saw how we could uh, add layers on uh, uh, on top of a base model right so some different ways to train uh, and i think the the, the takeaway here is um, you know it's pretty simple to train on SageMaker. Um, um, it's pretty simple to scale your data preparation as well uh, i really like SageMaker processing i use it a lot i think it's a it's a really cool way to do that so um, i'll put all the links in the video description go and run those examples and start tweaking them and of course if you have questions uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments okay thanks for thanks watching. for watching i hope you learned a few things and until next time keep learning bye bye